Sorry, Madam Speaker, I'll begin again. Ananda Dean, 11-year-old student abducted and killed in 2008. Kenise Jackson, 20 years old, accounting clerk of Portmore, St. Catherine, only daughter of her mother, body found in bushes in 2021. Jasmine Dean, visually impaired, U.S. student, missing since February 2020. Sharon Cole, 61 years old, of McDonald District, Crooked River, murdered on February 15. Imani Green, eight years old, British girl from Balham, South London, killed in Duncan's Trelawney on January 2013. Iselin McFarlane, mother, and Michelle McFarlane and Christina McFarlane, daughters, killed in November 2020. Colleen Walker, 53 years old, vice principal of Excelsior High School, killed in August 2020. Madam Speaker, many others not named today. It is on a somber note and with pain in my heart that I stand to give voice to the now suppressed voices of our sisters who have been brutally killed in the epidemic of domestic violence in our country. Killed because some man felt he had the right to decide whom she should love or that she should continue in an abusive relationship regardless. Killed because she did not have the physical strength to fight back. As intimidated and threatened, she kept silence until the moment of her death. Madam Speaker, we say today a special prayer for the soul and for the family of those who have been killed, and a special prayer for Kenise Jackson. In this case, we are reeling from what has happened to her. And we know that the police has taken into custody a person of interest and we support the national call for justice. I call out the names of victims earlier. I speak each name in this honorable house so that we can all collectively mourn with their families the loss of their loved ones. Another mother, a wife, a partner, a sister, a daughter, a friend, a co-worker, all Jamaican women and girls who were born with a dream. Their life snuffed out in an untimely fashion. We comfort, Madam Speaker, their families today as they mourn the empty space at the dining table, their noted absence at the family gathering, particularly at this time at Easter. The spirits of these persons, restless and weary, hover in this place as we remember them as part of our Jamaican family who should not have lost their lives in this fashion. I hope I speak for them, Madam Speaker, as their spirits beckon to us, not for revenge, but for justice, and ultimately for an end to these senseless acts of violence and hostility against our women and girls. In their silence, I speak now to the men of this country, those in this house, and in the wider society, as we seek solutions to these baseless acts of violence against our women and our girls. How can we, Madam Speaker, as a society remain unmoved by these horrible deaths of our women and girls? To what extent does the continuation of this hostility speak to collective failure on our part in this house and on the part of the whole society, Madam Speaker. If we all cannot protect our women and girls, our most vulnerable, from such horrible acts of violence, 
how do we even see ourselves as a civilized society? At what point do we say enough is enough? Madam Speaker, I want to use this opportunity to call on every organization in our country to get involved in activities to stem the bloodletting against our women and our girls in our communities. I want to ask our faith-based leadership to use their pulpit and their respected status to sustain a dialogue within communities in the face of this violence against our women and girls. I ask that they engage our men in dialogue as part of our collective effort to deal with these crimes. I beg to see influential men in this society engaging weaker-minded men in conversation so that we can create communities of harmony and peace where our women and girls can live free from fear for their lives. Faith-based institutions are disproportionately supported by our women. Women are at the forefront of church attendance, church ministry, and church fellowship. For their faith, trust, and commitment, today those who have lost their lives beckon to faith-based leaders and congregations to get involved, to be more vigilant, to speak out in situations of domestic conflict. They are in every single community in this country. It is no longer enough to declare it is not our business as our sisters cry in horrible silence in death. We must be our sisters' keepers. We must feel a commitment to protect our women and girls. We must be sisters for sisters. We must be brothers for sisters. And we must be brothers and sisters for each other. And I'm making a special appeal to the man them on the corner. Stop beating your woman and stop threatening them. We need to get on the ground, and we need to go into every single community across this country and do something about this horrible situation of violence against our women and girls. In some cases, our men who do not attend these faith-based institutions often decide to stay home expecting wives to return home to prepare dinner. And when church goes on longer than usual and they return home late, they are often met with hostility and violence. Cook your dinner yourself if you have to. But leave our women alone. This cannot be allowed to continue. And those who know must speak out before it is too late. Our women must no longer be told to suffer in violence, in, in silence or to expect their reward will come after they die. Madam Speaker, sadly, some of our men view compassion as a sign of weakness and unmanliness. This speaks to another factor that impacts women and girls negatively, often leading to violence. I refer to this as the cultural definition of maleness. Unfortunately, Madam Speaker, Many of our boys and men develop a toxic masculinity that often defines itself in violence and aggression against women and girls. Young men who are courteous and gentle with women are often harassed and vilified in favor of those who would push aggression in defining their maleness. To this end, I want to appeal to members of the music and entertainment fraternity, and media whose voices are keenly respected by our boys and young men to join us in this campaign to rid our country of the scourge of violence against our women and our girls. It used to be that one action that would almost always cause aggressive response in men would be to insult or vilify their mothers, their daughters, or their wives. 
Men used to get very upset if anybody tell them about their mother. So to the men of Jamaica, I ask, when did this change to the point that so many of our women are now suffering from violence at the hands of our men? Today, I call for collective action across the country. We must find solutions to this scourge among us. It must be all hands on deck. It is an issue of national security and justice. And we mu must commend and support the actions of our law enforcement in this matter. There is evidence that they are responding more rapidly and purposefully, and we encourage them to not relent. We see that they are starting to respond to calls regarding missing women without waiting for the usual 24 hours to pass. Waiting on 24 hours is no longer relevant and is no longer considered. We also encourage them to continue to step in whenever there is report of domestic conflict that demands attention or intervention. Don't say a man or woman business. Prevention must also be the preferred approach. To support law enforcement, my ministry through the Bureau of Gender Affairs will continue our consultation with citizens so that they can better recognize the telltale signs of broken relationships and domestic conflict before they end in death for a woman. Madam Speaker, on another note, there are those who are promoting the need for women to defend themselves by various means within the law. The idea that women should defend their lives by various means is gaining currency. Some have suggested that women arm themselves with pepper spray and other such instruments of defense. However, Madam Speaker, we are aware that there would need to be greater dialogue with the Ministry of Justice in relation to these matters. Suffice it to say that our women must now take very seriously their domestic circumstances and be open to counseling, finding solutions before things escalate, seek assistance when you think a relationship is going bad. In this regard, Madam Speaker, my ministry, the Ministry of Culture, Gender, Entertainment, and Sport, and its relevant division, which is the Bureau of Gender Affairs, will continue our dialogue with the Ministry of National Security, the Ministry of Justice, and other relevant agencies, and civil society to find urgent solutions to this crisis. We're also in discussion with the Social Development Commission because they are into community action and development. They have the network across the island. And I must commend the Minister of Local Government and Community Development for having this very effective network in every single community across this island. And we're going to work with them to see how we can make our intervention stronger. Additionally, at the Bureau, we will continue to promote male mentorship programs in schools so that boys may develop new and more positive approaches, approaches in their relationship with girls and women. Our 24-hour helpline is always open. Speak now before another woman or girl dies. The minister's time for speaking has expired. Uh, Madam Speaker, I beg to move that the member's time, the minister's time, be extended by five minutes to allow her to complete the presentation. The question is that the minister's time be extended to allow her to complete her presentation. Those in favor? Those against? Thank yes. you, Madam Speaker. We will enhance actions which we are ramping up to tackle this issue. In this regard, I bring to you information on some specific interventions we're making at the Bureau. 
The Refocus Perpetrators Program is, is one such, and this aims to provide alternative conflict resolution and rehabilitation techniques as options for men involved in intimate partner violence. This program starts this April. Another program, Know Your Rights Information Sessions. The idea here is to increase knowledge and awareness within the community on the Sexual Harassment Prevention Act and Domestic Violence Act. Another program, Stand Up, Talk Up Information Sessions. This aim to sensitize men and women to the issues surrounding intimate partner violence, positive masculinity, sexual harassment at the workplace, and child abuse. Another program we have is increased sensitization on the male crisis helpline. Many persons still see the Bureau as the Bureau of Women's Affairs, and so many of our men are not aware of this helpline. The Bureau will be taking to the streets and communities and hope to get help from the SDC to put this information by way of flyers in barbershops, bars, churches, etc., where men usually converged. Madam Speaker, as you know, many of our adolescent mothers also suffer from gender-based violence and sexual abuse. abuse. They are victims, and some of them have been a part of the program at the Women's Center of Jamaica Foundation. We have had 11-year-olds pregnant because of sexual abuse. The Bureau continues its program to rehabilitate these mothers and reposition them for success. And today, I wish to commend the Bank of Nova Scotia that has donated $2 million to the, to the Women's Center of Jamaica Foundation to provide tablets to our adolescent mothers to enhance the academic component of the program. Academic, and I think we should applaud them. <laughs> Academic reinforcement is a positive enhancer of hope for these are women who are prone to violence and abuse by virtue of being marginalized in the workforce and wider community. Additionally, my ministry is working, working to strengthen the staffing and provisions of the Bureau so that they can more readily and successfully intervene in the affairs that women find themselves in. This includes forecasting and evaluating the corrosive circum circumstances that they find themselves in. We will be creating a position of legal counsel at the Bureau where we will be able to provide legal advice in relation to domestic violence and to collaborate with law enforcement in the enforcement of the Domestic Violence Act and follow up on victims. The matter is urgent, Madam Speaker. And so I call upon all members of this honorable house to engage with us as we seek to eliminate the scourge within our society. There can be no comfort as long as our women and girls continue to face hostility, aggression, and violent death. Our women are the principal caregivers, as you all know. To harm or destroy them will impact the very fabric, fabric of our society. No one among us should feel comfortable while violence is meted out to our women and girls every day. Indeed, all of us should feel responsible for their well-being. Ultimately, the quality of our society will be measured by the way in which we treat the most vulnerable among us, our women and our girls. I call for national action for the elimination of violence against our women and girls, action to counter toxic masculinity that lines up in offense against our women, action to ensure that there is harmony and peaceful cohabitation within our communities based in respect for the right to life and freedom to be of all citizens 
particularly our women. Madam Speaker, I wish you, as I close, to give an update on Jodian, that homeless lady who was on the street with her son that was brought to our attention. She is no longer homeless. She has received a compassionate grant. She has been assisted with expenses for her transportation. She has been assisted with accommodation. And she is now employed. And so, Madam Speaker, those are my, and I can't say a few words.